When you buy Kroger brand products, you feel like you're winning. That's because they offer proven quality at lower than low prices. In fact, we guarantee that you and your family will love how Kroger brand products taste. Or you get your money back. So next time you're shopping for the family, look for delicious Kroger brand products. Because they'll make you all feel like you're winning. Shop now, in-store, or online. Bakers, fresh for everyone. It's been good. It's been fun. Second day of pads. Getting a little rest off. Brian <clears throat> mentioned the, the kind of competition that you two uh, have with each other. You guys were betting on, uh, I can't even remember what at this point. But. Oh, yeah. You know, every time a, a drive goes out, we try to give us a little edge to go make a play. So I think it was that last caller period where I just told him, like, you know, whoever gets the first sack, the other person got to do some push-ups. You're very athletic. You know, you know, going from the nine to the seven, do you prefer it going to the nine or the seven? It doesn't matter. You're just coming off um, playing to make a play. I think when you're talking ball, I think a nine is good when you're rushing a passer, when you're um, setting edges. I like a six when you, you know, the ball's going away, you got the back to your side. Uh, and then that tight end, when they're playing heavy on the ball, kind of having square feet, being able to uh, kind of shoot your guns. Now that the pads are on, are you getting a better vision? I mean, when everybody's out there, not a, you know, about, about Dexter, you, Brian, and what, you know, what things you can do, play them off each other, things like that? Definitely, you know, it's hard to put players together when you are not in pads, especially playing football. So being out there, you get to see guys really in their element and, you know, let them shine. So there's been a lot of plays made, whether it's in the middle, on the other, on the right edge or left edge, and it helps you understand, you know, how to work cohesively. Kayvon, what do you expect of yourself this season? <sighs> Greatness, <laughs> nonetheless, you know, I feel like that's going to be something you guys hear from me every year, every time you ask me, just because, you know, we, we work too hard and we've done so much to get here that now it's, you know, we're too deep in it to, to turn back now. So this is going to continue to strive for greatness and whatever that looks like in my career, you know, I got to be happy with it and, and the work I put in at the end of the day. You know, on those same lines in terms of expectations, you guys can't help but hear the outside expectations, you know, based on maybe the previous year or whatever. Um, how do you handle that internally in the, in the room? And, and what are your expectations given Daniel back healthy and guys like Wandell back and some of the, you know, people you brought in like Brian? Honestly, the, the thing about expectations itself is that it always seems bigger from the outside, but it never really is. You know, any athlete, anybody competing at the professional level will tell you that the expectations on oneself are always greater than the outside. So I don't think there are any goals, any you know aspirations, anything that this team is trying to accomplish that the outside world, you know, isn't on the same page with. So I, I don't see a lot of pressure, I think is just continuously being keened in on what's important and giving your energy to the day-to-day -day on getting better. I think it'll be good. I think it'll be great for us. And I honestly think the competition at each position is what's going to make us great. Kayvon, you've been a teammate of Dex. You got paid. Um, you're a new teammate of uh, Brian's, a new teammate of yours. He obviously to come here got paid. You're going into your third year. Uh, Dex and I guess Andrew both. That was after the year that they committed to them. Um, I mean, as much as winning and all everything, that's a carrot, I would imagine. Yeah. That, that, you know, what, what is your thoughts on that? Yeah, when I was younger, my mom told me, you hang out with three clowns, you'll be the fourth. So you hang out <laughs> with three rich guys, you'll be the fourth. So uh, I'm just going to keep working, man. You know, the the lights and everything are ahead. Um, right now, I just got to keep my head down, keep tunnel vision, and understand that, you know, there's no way I can, there's no greater way I can affect my future other than the work I put in, you know, on the field. So just continuing to, to control what I can control and, you know, keep sharpening my tools. Is there any way uh, for you in your mind to think that, you know, uh, uh, um, Andrew is a, is a um, um, you know, a fixture here, and so is Dex now. Um, is there any reason to think that you, as a first round pick, um, will not be a fixture here? I mean, is there any reason to think that that would Nah, happen? no chance. As long as Brian and, <laughs> as long as Coach Dable and uh, Joe Sheen are here, I'll be here. How can you? You spoke about communication. You spoke about playing effectively and efficiently. Um, out there today, you guys are making a lot of plays. You guys look like you were buzzing a bit today. You know, can you speak about that confidence is building and just what does that mean later in the season? And mm -hmm. you know, what the, how does that impact that defense? Yeah, I think the best part about you know playing team ball is that you get to celebrate other people, right? So out there, we're playing physical, we're playing fast, we're playing out, 
our style. So we're able to celebrate each other's wins. You know, it's on different, you know, different aspects of the game, but seeing guys run and hit, seeing guys make plays in the air, you know, seeing D linemen uh, win rushes or set edges. It's, uh, it's something beautiful to see. You know, now we're putting it together and it's always good when you can dominate offense. How can you and Brian Burns play off of each other and maybe bring out the best in each other? Mm -hmm. Is there a way that that can happen? Definitely. I think the first step is just the standard. You know, we set the standard in individual drills and team drills um, and how we play. And then we start to really use each, each other's skill set to grow you know, each other. So for him, he's a fast, twitchy guy. I'm more of a long, powerful guy. And I can, you know, show him a few things. He can show me a few things. And while we're in the rush, right, I know how he's going to approach his offensive tackle and he knows how I'm going to approach it. So we kind of unleash it and we just continue to play. And, you know, I think when you look at how a front rush is, it's balanced, right? And that's kind of the key to a good rush is having balance in the, um, the view of the quarterback. So just understanding that if he's going speed, I'm going power. If I'm going speed, he's going power. If he go inside, I go outside. And it's simple. It's just knowing what a guy likes and, and being able to uh, see it on the field. Did that chemistry, though, come pretty easily between the two of you? Because I can imagine other scenarios, perhaps other times that maybe two mm -hmm. players didn't have that kind of synergy. Well, I would say it's not necessarily just the synergy, Right. It is that that is a key part. But I would say you got to have guys who can play. You know, when you have a guy like who like Burns, who can call a shot and he knows what he's going to do, because the hardest thing is in football is like you can talk about it, but being about it is the next level. So like having to do like Dex, you know what he's going to do, because that's what he does. Right. And even even last year, like talking to Dex, like there are some inside moves, there are some things that I got to commit to that as a young player, you don't understand that. You, you think you can be Superman and do everything, but it's like, no, I'm playing for my teammate. I got to commit to whatever we talked about, whatever game plan we have in place. And that's what, when you have a, a vet like Burns, you know, it does come natural. It seems so much emphasis is focused on the pass rush when we talk about this team. Stopping the run is always number one on defense though. Mm -hmm. Have you seen signs that you can be a very good team against the run? Yeah, yeah. Dex, he's the biggest sign. He's the biggest sign we got, and then we got two edges that, you know, are committed to 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 throwing their shots. So, I think when you look at just the run defense in general, like we're coming to play. You know, every down is a one on one. So whether it's you know nine on seven run or it's pass rush, everyone is a one on one, and we're here to win. Them. Hey, does this set a good tone that Burns gets nicked up yesterday, and that he's out there today at full? Like, do you guys notice that? Uh, I would say. You know, now that in old school football, yeah. Like, yeah, it sets a tone, like, oh, I'll play through every injury. But I, I think for him, it's just balancing. And for me and seeing him, it's like, all right, man, balance, you know, know not to not to go out here and kill yourself just because you want to be great, right? And I think that's that next level of, like, what greatness is. And granted, if he feels great to go, go, by all means. If you're if you're hurt, go. But if you're injured, the, the next step of greatness is, you know, being ready for Sunday. So I think it's just that, you know, that happy medium, being able to uh, gauge, you know, what's the most important. But yeah, he's him being out there is is definitely always a sign of um, strength.